disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> She's going to play one. Yeah. <laughs> Hosanna. Hosanna. In the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. Let us pray. Holy God, as the people shouted Hosanna and waved their branches in honor of your Son, Jesus the Messiah, we remember how quickly those shouts changed. It is easy to fall away when nothing is at risk. We ask you to give us courage to continue on the way of peace when trouble is on the horizon. 
Amen. We turn the page now. ask you to raise your branches one more. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. Jesus is coming, Hosanna, 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 H
more my I life is wasted, wasted with grief and, and my, my years with sighing. My, my strength, strength fails me because of, because of affliction, affliction and, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. We are turning, Lord, to hear you. Merciful and kind, so to anger rich in blessing, when you love to us in time. Today's gospel reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 20 through 27. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now, my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. And so we come to it. The holiest of weeks for us who follow the way of Christ. We've witnessed the triumphal entry of our king. A king like no other. A king that we wouldn't even recognize as a king. As we've said in the past, this scene of Jesus entering Jerusalem is the absolute opposite of a kingly scene. You see, a triumphal entry into a city is done with pomp and circumstance. The hero riding on a white stallion in front of legions and legions and legions of his or her army. The people carefully choreographed with rose petals and, and other uh, banners and flags and chanting the hero's name. That would be a triumphal entry. As he comes through the main gate of the city as conqueror, as hero. There will be no mistaken the status of the one on that white horse. And so what does our king do? He's trundling along on foot on a dusty path towards a side gate where all the regular people enter. A side gate that maybe even is only the place where the herders and the shepherds would bring their flocks. 
and their herds. And our king comes and instead of picking a big white horse, he picks an ass. Climbs on top of that donkey and rides on. Instead of rose petals and colorful banners, he's greeted with the things that are on the side of the street. Branches, probably of palm, but could have been of anything that was growing along the side of the road. In another gospel, they talk about laying their clothes that they're wearing onto the ground to greet this one. Triumphal entry? No. <laughs> I think, especially in the Gospel of John, the irony should not be lost. This is a humiliating entry by the world's standards. What kind of king would allow themselves to be seen in this way? Over the centuries, many a theologian has tried to pep up this scene. Artists have tried to make it seem glorious and made it seem romantic even. Look at the picture on our cover. Isn't that romantic? And Wouldn't you want to be there too? What's missing from a lot of this is the reality of the situation, the political realities of the situation. Remember, Israel is an occupied country by a foreign military and ruled at this moment by that one pilot who's not known to be very nice. To even suggest that you are a king is to speak out against this rule. To claim something else. Now, for those in occupation, what might they be hoping for? Won't they be hoping for a great military leader who can outmaneuver those Roman soldiers and overthrow their occupation? Isn't that what they long for? And what do they get? They get this pathetic guy on a donkey whose only interest is, seems to be talking a lot, <laughs> healing some folks, not behaving in any righteous way. He sits with women out in the open, hangs out with prostitutes and tax collectors, eats pretty much with whoever he wants to. And he does things on the Sabbath that you're not supposed to do. He's everything that the people are not looking for. Triumphal entry. Curious onlookers, maybe. Isn't this the guy dead? That's what they're interested in, according to John. They're not interested in all the signs that the author has shown that shows this one to be the Messiah. John has spent 13 chapters showing us the signs that this is the one. This is the Word made flesh. The Son of Man, the Son of God. Come into the world. 
And yet, at the beginning of the, this gospel, what does it say? The world rejected him. When we read the Gospel of John, we need to focus on that. It was right at the beginning. The Word became flesh and dwelled among them, and then they rejected him. Triumphal entry. Not much of an entry at all. And pretty precarious considering how quickly the tide changes. How quickly things turn from branch waving to fist waving. One of my professors reminds us always that the way to the cross is the cross. Meaning it's always right there in front of you. The truth, the reality of who God is for us. And yet we reject this very vision, this very hope. We always seem to choose the way of violence and war. It's always been the way since Cain slain, slay, uh, what's the word? <laughs> Killed Abel. What is it about us? What is it about me? It makes it so hard to follow this one who shows us the simple way. Honor the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Remember, this is the, just about the only command that Jesus gives us. Out of love, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Out of love, Jesus sat at the well and spoke with that woman and gave her that image of never having to be thirsty again. It was out of love that Jesus healed the blind man. out of love that he turned water into wine. It's out of love that he fed the 5,000. It's out of love that he healed the centurion's son. And it's out of love that he forgave everyone their sins. Everyone. And maybe that's the nub of it. We don't like that it's everyone. Hmm. Be honest. There's people in this world you wonder. Are they worthy of God's forgiveness? Because I find it hard to forgive them. So it's out of love that Jesus rides that donkey into, the, into that city, claiming what is rightfully God's judgment. The world thought it would judge Jesus on that cross, but who is it that judges from that throne but God? and God's self. And what does God judge? He judges us worthy of that same love that was shown to 
woman at the well and the blind man and those 5,000 on the hillside. That same love that forgives and forgives and forgives. This is what Holy Week is about. Is dwelling in this moment. This moment between our King humbly entering our lives and our answer to that presence. We think about this week as one long worship service that begins today. There's no Holy Communion today because we come back Thursday and share in the meal when Jesus gives this meal to his disciples. We come that day and do that ritual washing that shows that we indeed are connected by this work of love. That that washing is a sign of our work out in the world and how we encourage each other and lift each other up. We come back on Good Friday to remember that journey to the cross and what our God suffered on our behalf. The service doesn't end till next week, <laughs> till next Sunday. But in the meantime, we dwell. We reflect. My encouragement for you this week as a discipline is read all four Gospels' description of this week. Dwell in the Word. Think about all the different ways that those authors reflect on the reality of this event that show, so shapes our lives. To dwell in the Word written, but then I also encourage you to dwell in the word in silence. Slow down. This is our Holy Week. This is our time to spend in reflection on who this Jesus is for us and reclaiming the truth. And we're not going to allow Pilate to have the last word, what is truth? For we know who the truth, the way, and the life is. Amen. I invite you, as you are able, to stand and we'll join in the hymn there in God's garden. We're only going to sing the first three verses.
Let's share our faith now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church, called to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Make us unflinching servants of the gospel. Deliver us from hardship as we confront the forces of injustice and practice radical compassion. Merciful God, for the earth and all its inhabitants created in love. Train us to recognize your divine goodness in the world around us. Rouse in us a reverence for creation that we take greater care of its resources. Merciful God, for those in positions of authority called to lead with integrity and compassion, Supply them with courage and vulnerability when challenged with new ideas. Deliver them from fear that limits imagination and impedes justice. Merciful God, for those who suffer, waiting expectantly for mercy and consolation, accompany those who feel abandoned or betrayed. Defend those who are wrongly accused and embrace those who are incarcerated or detained. Heal those who are ill. Merciful God, for Christians around the world preparing this week to journey with Jesus to the cross, reveal to us once again the earth-shaking power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. Lead us all from death to life. Merciful God, for our own nation, we remember our new justice who was elected this week. We give thanks that we continue to heal the divisions that are among us. Merciful God, for whom do the people pray? We remember those who have died, who were commended into your hands. We remember, remember us when you come into your kingdom and prepare a place for each of us with you in paradise. Merciful God, accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's turn and share that peace with one another. Peace, peace. Peace, peace. peace, peace. You may be seated. At this time, we usually receive our offering. Uh, what we'll do is we'll ask you on your way out to leave your offering in the plate in the inner narthex along with your uh, pew card. Um, but with that, let's listen to our offertory. <laughs> Oh, no. 
Redeeming God, as we give back to you a portion of that which you first have given us, we remember that your greatest gift to us is your Son, Jesus. Let these gifts help enlighten the world to the way of peace. We pray. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray.
seated for the announcement. Good morning. Thank you again for your help and support with the ongoing community food drive uh, that will go through this month of April. Thanks also to the 12 to 15 people who helped yesterday at the church work party and cleaning up the grounds. We appreciate that. This Saturday, the 16th of April, our men's breakfast will happen at 9 a.m. downstairs. Pastor Berg will lead a devotion, and Gordy Phelps will prepare a delicious breakfast as always. We also have our Easter breakfast prep this Saturday morning beginning at 10.30. If you're a young person in middle school or high school would like to help, please sign up on the youth board. Also, a week from today is Easter. The Easter breakfast will happen from 9.30 to 11.00. And we invite you to join us for fresh baked coffee cake and a delicious fruit salad, coffee, etc. downstairs. And uh, it'll be a breakfast and food drive to help support the nourishing North Shore Network. And last, uh, beginning in May, the four, first three Wednesdays, the 4th, 11th, and 18th, um, Pastor Jill Nichols Hicks will be leading a book study on Lutheran theology, a grammar of faith. Uh, if you have any questions about that, it's in the newsletter and hopefully in the weekly news this coming week. Thank you. Well, there's 12 more days till our 10th year of our Quiltathon for Lutheran World Relief. We have enough to do 60 quilts. Friday, April 22nd, 1 to 5, 5 to 6 with the light lunch, uh, supper, and 6 to 9. Saturday, 9 to 1. Bring your sharp scissors. We'll have a display of all our finished quilts in the narthex on the following Sunday. So when you're signing up, make sure that you look on Saturday Thank you for having <laughs> Susan sign, Pastor, and Susan are coming Saturday, so come join them. Um, we have 160 school kits that will be packed on May 1st. The Hannah Circle and Deborah Circle and some others that have donated to the circles. Um, we'll have over 300 school kits, uh, personal care kits which are desperately needed in Poland. We've never ever done that many. Packing will be on May 12th and the 13th, Roger takes the van, which will be chuck full to the loading place in Seattle. So please sign up today so we know how many tables to sign up, to set up, thanks. As you know, I just said uh, in the sermon, this is Holy Week, and so uh, just a reminder of when the services are. Wednesday night is our healing service. It will be entirely on Zoom and at 7 p.m. Uh, that service, if you're going to participate, I ask that you have a little uh, dollop of oil, olive oil, and a candle uh, handy for that service. On Thursday, we'll have a noon, uh, Monday, Thursday service here in the narthex or here in the sanctuary and then at 7 p.m uh, we'll also have a worship service here in the sanctuary but that one will also be broadcast over zoom uh, then uh, friday night is good friday at 7 p.m that service will be here in the sanctuary and broadcast on zoom as well as roger alluded it, uh, on easter sunday we'll be going to two worship service 8 30 and 11 and uh, just to know, we'll continue that 8, 30, and 11 worship service through May. So we'll have two worship services from Easter through May till Memorial Weekend when we go back to one service. With that, I invite you to stand for the beginning of the Passion Narrative.
from John the 19th chapter. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which is in Hebrew called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priest said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written... I have written the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace, Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.